Have you ever thought about adding an additional revenue stream to your wedding business? Maybe you've thought of adding a photo booth or a content creation, or maybe you've thought about adding a line of rentals to your existing business. If any of those thoughts have ever noodled through your head, then today's episode is for you. If you wanna know more about Katie's story, you can go back and listen to her on episode 76 and on episode 127. She actually won a coaching call on the show back in April of 2021. And then we had her back a year later to really talk about how those strategies were working, what was working, in her business and what was next. The really cool thing about having her back today is she's now an associate coach inside of Wedding Pro CEO. She's grown up inside of the program and seen so much success inside of her own business by using the strategies that we teach. And she has such an incredibly complimentary skill set to mine where she can teach our pros about building a rentals business or building a second revenue stream inside of their wedding business because she has done that so well as you're going to hear in today's episode. She's also going to walk us through some of the steps that you can implement in your own business to be able to start this additional revenue stream. And I want you to really listen to this episode you if you've ever thought about how can I make more money from the events I already do? Because as you'll hear in the show, Katie has blown the revenue out of the water and her secondary revenue stream now makes almost the same amount of money in her business as her primary revenue source. You guys do not want to miss this episode. Plus at the end of the show, she is going to give us a brand new freebie that she created just for you. So stick around and let's get into it. All right, Katie, I am so excited to get to chat today. Now, this time having you back on the show, this is your third time, but your first time as a coach within Wedding Pro CEO. So welcome to the show. Yes, thank you. I am so excited. So much has changed since the last time I've been on. It's really kind of crazy, right? I I hope that if anybody's listening and you're kind of like, oh, this is my first time hearing about Katie or or kind of knowing Katie's story, I want you to go back and listen to the episodes that she has been on before. It's been really fun because Katie actually won a coaching call, right, on the podcast way back when I was a baby coach and you were just starting your business. I replied to an email that I I got from you and and honestly with no hopes or or anything (laughs) thinking that I would actually win that coaching call, right? And just so funny how much has transpired since then. It really is. It's so crazy. So Katie started within the Accelerator right when we started it years ago and has really come through the Accelerator and the Inner Circle and our Next Level program and is now a coach within the program. And there's so many reasons why I asked Katie to come on as a coach, but a lot of those reasons center around the fact that one, she came up through the program, so she knows that it works and there's so many tools and resources that she has been able to implement into her business that have helped her to scale, but also because Katie has very complementary skill sets to mine. So like Katie's company is very much focused on design. She also has a very thriving rentals business, which is what we're going to dig into today. And so I really wanted somebody who could bring a skill set that I didn't have to our members. And there were so many questions around, how do I start a rentals company? There's so many vendors that want to do that. So Katie, our listeners can go back and listen to your full story on the other episodes, but can you kind of give us the quick version of what you do now? Yes. So now I actually no longer plan and execute events within my company. So that's been exciting. So I I now really focus on the growth of the company as a whole and growing the team. I have an executive team. And so my focus is, again, on their growth and on new company initiatives. So, of course, we realize, and I'm sure we'll get into a little bit more, we realize just how profitable Collective and the rental side of the business was. So our focus right now is how do we make that even bigger, right? And... And so I get to do that. I get to be a part of Wedding Pro CEO and coach so many incredible wedding pros there. And that's really kind of my focus right now is is focusing on those two aspects. Yeah, I love it so much. Okay, so let's really dig into maybe a little bit of a history of Collective. So Collective is your, I I call it a rentals business, but I think that that's really not an appropriate term because it's not. No, it's it's hard. It feels like a generic term. So I think everybody kind of resonates with it. But I've always said that my one rule was I would never do anything we had to wash. So it's like not a rentals business in that category. I don't want to be washing chargers or linens or doing anything like that. So it's kind of more 
I would say like a production and fabrication business, yeah. right? So it's a lot of, you know, signage, installations. We have a custom vinyl printer. We have, you know, bar facades, stage facades. We do a lot of seating chart installs, things like that. I mean, if you would have asked me three years ago if this is where we would be today, I would have said you that, you know, you're absolutely nuts. But we just, you know, we kind of early on segmented the company into yeah. planners and designers. And that's something I think I coach a lot of the students on too. It works for us. It doesn't necessarily work for everyone. But having that separation between planning and design and really working with, you know, my team members and their skill sets and, mm-hmm. and knowing where their strengths lie that's kind of how Collective started. And it was just, you know, let's make five by seven table numbers that didn't look like signs from Hobby Lobby that we saw constantly. And and we thought it would just be rentals that we would, you know, showcase mm-hmm. over and over, right? Let's make them once, rent them multiple times. That seemed like the best idea. And then before you know it, we were building things in the garage and making neon signs. And then we had a trailer and storage units. And now we have a warehouse. So it has just transformed honestly that is so crazy so okay so take us back a little bit so you um started collective you kind of mentioned it just now like you were just like okay the hobby lobby sign trend is so old and done and so how do we kind of elevate this for our clients so originally you were really just doing small signage and Mm -hmm. small things did you start that with like a cricket? This is where my level of expertise like goes away, but I, I know the term cricket. <laughs> yes, yes. So it was it was basically that. I think at the time we were buying acrylic from mm-hmm. Amazon, right? We were getting the sizes that we needed from Amazon. And yes, we use a silhouette machine. It's very okay. similar to a cricket. Um, I also don't do the production, so I could probably be saying things wrong, but I know we use a silhouette machine and it's similar to a cricket. And it was, it was just, you know, small signs with the vinyl on it, right? And changing up the fonts and trying to make one a little bit more modern and one a little more traditional. So we could have that, that variation depending on what our clients were looking for. And then it, you know, we started playing with wood and trying to have different materials. So it was like wood with vinyl on that, or we layered acrylic on wood. And so Mm. it was just, I mean, so many little things could really change the design of it, right? We could do different colors. We can do different fonts. So it was, again, you know, we had multiple styles of card boxes because you don't need to buy a card box if you're a bride because when are you going to use it again, right? So just rent ours for 25 bucks and we'll call it a day. But it was just knowing and having a really small inventory to start, to be honest, of just, okay, this is what we have. Choose what works for you. It, you know, there's something that works for everybody at this point. Okay, so I know with our students, a lot of our students are starting off right here, right? They're like, Katie, I want to add an additional revenue stream. And so they're starting to, you know, start to dabble in getting a cricket or silhouette or maybe even something bigger. Mm-hmm. Uh, What I'd like to know, and I think this is one of the biggest questions we get, is how do you start making money from it? Are you promoting it just to your own clients? I know you now work outside of just Scarlet Rose clients, but how did that kind of start off? Yeah, that's a great question. I think that was something that we struggled with for quite some time, if I'm being honest. Um, I I knew very early on that I wanted to have a separate Instagram account. So if you you know look into any of our Instagram channels, we have Scarlet Rose Events and we have Scarlet Rose Collective, mainly because I just didn't want to have our events page be Mm. bogged down by nothing but signage, right? So it was like, okay, if you want to look at our rentals and our signage and our installs, go to this and you can see everything. And it's a lot of couples will ask us, do you have like a gallery or a catalog? So just look at our Instagram and that's where you'll see everything. And then yes, we didn't know if we were going to offer it to people outside of our planning company. Honestly, I say, and it probably sounds bad, I didn't know if I wanted to build another planner's portfolio. But I think having the two accounts, it it helped tremendously because planners are not afraid to tag us because Mm. they know they're not tagging our events company and we're not posting their work on our events page, but we certainly shout them out and give them all the kudos for their design on our collective page. And so we decided early on that we would offer it to people outside of our company, which was the best blessing ever because this year alone, I think I've looked at the numbers recently and we 45% of the revenue that we've done this year, and it's actually over $100,000 of the revenue so far this year for collective, are people that weren't even our clients to begin with. That's so, so crazy. 
it's just, it's, it's miraculous. And, and we've learned along the way, right? We've, you know, worked with different planners and, you know, we're trying to get a little bit more into corporate, but we really appreciate our planner partners mm-hmm. and the venues that recommend us. And so we're working on planner partner programs and just ways that we can, you know, give back and say, Hey, thanks so much for your support and, and for believing in Scarlet Rose Collective. And Adding us is almost like a regular vendor, just like you would a rentals company with linens and chargers and things like that. Yes. Oh my gosh. I love this. Okay. So starting this separate Instagram definitely was huge. And walk Mm -hmm. us through the numbers a little bit. You were actually speaking at an event in South Florida this week, at least the week that we were recording, that we are recording this, and which it's been so fun to get to see Katie step into this educator role. And so many people are excited to learn about like how you can add this additional revenue stream. And it really can grow into something much larger. And you were sharing the numbers with this group of attendees. Can you share that a little bit? Walk us through kind of how it's grown over the years. Yes, absolutely. So, you know, I say the first year, we we really kind of started Scarlet Rose Collective in, in the fall of 2020, but I would say 2021 was our first year really promoting it and doing it a bit more regularly. But I And I shared at the speaking engagement, I don't know what our numbers were for Collective in 2021, which I hate to even say that in front of you, right? I'm sure we <laughs> talked about it that year. That was yeah. a mistake and something I wish I had known better. But in, in 2021, all I know is that company, uh, for company revenue, we did 220000 that year. But then in 2022, Scarlet Rose Collective did $135,000 in revenue by itself. And I think that year it made up about 24% of my overall annual revenue. And then last year, 2023, we closed out Scarlet Rose Collective at $226,000. So, I mean, it almost basically doubled, which is just tremendous. And it was about 35% of the revenue. When I pulled numbers for the presentation recently, so far year to date, Collective has done $223,000 just for the year, which is just incredible. Yeah. It's July. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. I I mean, it could be a mere half a million dollar business this year yep. alone. And now, like I said, it's 49% of my overall annual revenue. And, and we've really learned, I think this year especially has been the biggest growth because with me pulling out of events and being a little bit more aware of where my focus needs to be and where the mm-hmm. team's focus needs to be. And again, getting the right people in the right places and, and making sure that they're doing the tasks that will mm-hmm. drive that revenue. I think that's what's been the biggest proponent of our success. I agree. And I think, you know, right at the beginning of the episode, you said, I don't do events any longer. I'm completely out of events. And I think that there's a lot of people who listen to the podcast or to teachings that we've done. And they're like, well, I don't necessarily want to stop doing events. Do I have to stop doing events to really make use of your program? And and I think absolutely not, right? The Really, the goal is to get you as the business owner to a place where you can see your business from the top down. And with Katie's, because of Collective, really, it just became necessary where it was like collective you are either going to have to stop it from growing or you're going to have to like pull out of events because you've got to be able to take control of both of these companies which I mean really both of your companies have the potential to do a half a million dollars this year so that's it's very difficult Mm -hmm. for you to still have clients and do that right so I guess my question to you is when somebody says do I have to stop doing events or why did you stop doing events I'd love for you to talk through that a little bit Yeah. I I mean, certainly to your point, the answer is no, you don't have to stop doing events. I I think also part of it is, is knowing what you love and what you really like to do as your, as the business owner and as the CEO of your company. I, I still love events and you know, I love people. And before I got into this industry, I was in management and in a leadership role. And so I think me being able to still be a part of the hospitality business, which I love so much, but really also do it more as a leader to my team. Um, that to me was, I think, the most exciting. Um, but no, you definitely don't have to stop doing events. I mean, you could scale back significantly on the amount that you do. Um, but really, I think for me, being able to, like you said, kind of have that high level bird's eye view of what's going on in my company and where I need to put focus. And it's not always my focus. It could be the team, right? Mm-hmm. So 
Ray Lynn, who I'm again, if you go back and listen to those early podcasts, I talked about her and then um, she's been with me since the beginning. She has really stepped into the role and, and she kind of at this point runs and manages and operates collective. And, and I think knowing again, where her skill sets lie and putting her in a position to allow it to grow and thrive mm -hmm. is also what has made it as successful as it is today. Yep. Yep. I agree with that so much. And it's been really fun to watch. Yes. Ray Lynn and Kylie step into their roles mm -hmm. and they're really stepping up into what you used to do. And it's just so exciting to, to really be able to grow careers for other people out of just something that was an idea so long ago. Right. Isn't that like the coolest feeling? It's my favorite. I think when we, with the events company, we just went through a rebrand recently and it was the first time someone asked, you know, all of those questions like, why did you start your business? What do you, what does this mean to you? What do you want to do? And for me, it really was, you know, I want other women to love what they do every day. And we are very much like work hard, play hard. We're going to hustle, but we're also going to enjoy time with our families. And, you know, my girls on the team, you know, I've got 10 of them now and, you know, they've gotten married over the years, had babies. So it's been so fun to see you know, you can still have a job and a career that, you know, takes care of you, that you work really hard at, that you love to do, mm -hmm. but also you can have the time and the freedom and the flexibility to be with your family and do these other things also. Yes. I love that. Okay. So Katie, circling back to the rentals business a little bit, if somebody's listening to this show and they're like, yeah, I, I have a few things that we've purchased, but we, we've really just not gotten it off the ground. Or, you know, I, I've been toying with the idea of offering rentals, but I don't really know where to start. What would you say would be your first couple of tips to really launch that rentals business? Yeah, definitely. I think marketing is a huge part of it, right? And we talked about that a little bit already. You know, us having separate Instagram accounts was a big part of what I knew I wanted to do, you know, we knew who our audience was and who we were marketing towards. Um, one thing I think that is also important is you need to treat it like its own business, mm -hmm. right? So you need to think about, you know, with this side of your business, whether it's rentals or something else, another revenue stream, who's your audience? What do you stand for? What are your values for this part of the business? What are your content pillars? And then that will help you when you translate into social media and your copy and things like that. But also having good SOPs. I know that's something that we talk to all of our students about so much is SOPs and, and workflows and you know working smarter, not harder, right? So we've had things in place in the event side of the company, right? And that's why it has grown to the level that it has on events. And you know we do the amount of weddings we do every year and we've grown the team. But then I realized we needed to do the same for collective. Mm. So, and it took us a few years to, to realize, okay, how do we need to structure this? How are we scheduling the team members? How do we even know what's going out this weekend, right? Do we have enough of those table numbers? And I will be the first to say it is not perfect. <laughs> and we are learning and growing every single day with it. But we've, we've found calendar systems that work well for us, you know, we, we know how to display everything so that it's understandable for the client and they know what they can expect on wedding day, but so can our team and they know what to build and, and make. Um, we have a separate contract for those kind of things, right? A whole invoicing platform and a place where we track our inventory now. And again, it's just, it's not something that has to happen overnight, yeah. right? But for us, I think finally getting all of these things the way that they needed to be from the beginning is helping us scale even more this year. So I think knowing your marketing and your audience and how you're going to, you know, present this product or service and then having the SOPs that, you know, it's what makes our business go around yeah. every day. Yeah, I love it. It's been so exciting to watch you. And really, it's been so fun to have you as a resource inside of our programs because, you know, a lot of people immediately think, oh, well, this is for planners, you know, being able to add rentals, but there's so many vendors that can add rentals. So florist for sure, designers mm -hmm. can add rentals as well. Yeah. But I also love that you've been able to help some of our other students as well. DJs adding content creation or adding um, photo mm -hmm. booths or different streams of revenue and having, you know, our photographers, same, being able to add different streams of revenue into their business. It's really just, it's all the same methodology, you know, of like, okay, here's what you mm -hmm. do to start and things like that. And here, you, here are tips to help it to grow. So it's been really really fun to have that skill set inside of our programs and really our goal 
inside of Wedding Pro CEO is always to help you figure out how do you maximize profit? How do you make more money without you personally working more, right? Like that's not the goal is for you to work mm -hmm. every single weekend to make more money. We want you to work smarter, not harder. And so it's been really fun to have that resource inside the program. Katie, you also recently created a rentals guide that you were able to give out to the attendees of the event that you just spoke at. But I'd love for us to be able to give it out here too. Can you tell us a little bit more about what's inside the guide? Yeah, it is a nice, easy way to think about, you know, starting from the beginning, how how could you double your revenue by adding rentals to your business? And mm. just like you said, you don't have to be a planner to do that. Yeah. Um, but there are some really good tips and actionable items in there for those that do want to add that second revenue stream, specifically with rentals too, on just how to get started. And again, these are the things that I would have done over or just thinking back on what has made Scarlet Rose Collective so successful is yeah. those tips. So yeah, I would love to be able to give that to our listeners. That's perfect. Okay. So you guys go over to brandygar.com slash rentals guide, and you can grab that. Just put your email address in. We'll pop it right over to you. And it's a really comprehensive guide. So I'm excited for you guys to get it into your hands and start making money. Honestly, even if you added $10,000 in revenue to your business this year, just by having a few things, like think about that. There's there's so much potential with adding rentals. They're a one-time purchase and a lots of times rental. And it's just such a, a simple thing that you can do inside your business. And if you want it to grow even more, then you could certainly do that by just expanding, expanding. So go grab the rentals guide. It's brandyguard.com slash rentals guide. We'll also put it in the description below. And we'll also link all of Katie's um, Instagram so that you can go make sure you say hi, tell her you heard her on the show. And you can see the difference between Scarlet Rose events and Scarlet Rose Collective. And Katie, this was so awesome. Thanks for being here now as a coach. I know, yes, thank you so much. It has just been, a blessing and, and so fun to be able to grow with you as my coach and then now as a associate coach within Wedding Pro CEO and chat with planners and stationers and florists and DJs and photo and video so alike. Fun. It's just been amazing to see the growth of it. I love it. So fun. All right, you guys, we'll see you next time. Bye.